So setting this up is actually really easy. That's why I picked zero tier to show you. Uh, you just have to go to zero tier.com. Take away demo just so you can see. So zero tier.com. Uh, I'll put that link in the description. Go to login. And if you don't have an account, you still go to login, log into zero tier. And down here at the bottom right, register. Click that, register. You'll end up back here next time to log in. I'm going to log in on because it's used set up using my private IP address, private username. Sorry, I am going to log in over here. When you log in, you end up here. So you click on networks, which takes you to this screen. You won't have anything here. You won't have any networks. So all you have to do is click create a network. Boom, that's it. It doesn't ask you anything. It just creates you one. Now, the name is just what appears on the client. So I've already installed it here. And if I was to right click here, there's nothing listed because I'm not connected to anything. But I just have this one in the background just as a test. But this new network we've created. So there's not a lot of settings. That's why it's dragged us all the way down to no devices have joined. Click the download to do it. We're just going to scroll all the way back up to the top. So you can give this a friendly name. Like I said, just so it shows up, you can connect to multiple networks at the same time. This just shows you which one you're connected. So if you create that as a friendly name, uh, which I don't care about. Description, again, just your description. Access control. It defaults to private. This is about when someone enters this ID into their zero tier client, if you click public, anyone that enters that ID are automatically on your network. There is maybe some fringe cases where that's where that's desired, should I say. Uh, but in nearly every case, you're going to want private. That just means when someone puts this ID in here, down here, it shows you, this is missing here, but when someone, I'll show you that, when someone puts that ID in, it says, hey, they're here. They're not connected to your network. You have to tick a box to authorize it. But we're not worried about that just now. What we want to do is with a VPN, some of you will be familiar with a VPN somewhat. So let me so I'm just going to explain it. Um you have three IP addresses effectively. You have the external IP, that was the one that we used to uh, set the firewall in the cloud machine. You'll have your internal IP address. That's where all your computers and phones on your local internet has an address that people on the internet can't access. They're only available in the network and your router shares that external IP with all your devices. Now with this one, this is a third set. This is like your internal IP. Uh, but what's important is that you pick a range that does not clash with your own network. Now, most of these are not um, are not going to clash with your network. Um, there is one that, that absolutely will in a lot of cases, and that is 192.168.192. Uh, that was a very common, um, not so much with ISPs now, but it was at one time a very common range to use. So if you know your uh, internal IPs are on that range, don't pick it. If you don't have any idea what that is because all your machines auto configure, you can go start CMD, return, type IP config, and you'll see here I've got two internal IP addresses. One because apparently, even though it didn't say so, um, <laughs> my zero tier is actually connected so in this case i've got that one there but this is my isp's connected one 172.31.3 uh with 255.255.00 on zero tier that's the zeros are stars on the subnet so what i would not want to do is pick 172.31 on here um because then it, it just won't clash my router will think those machines belong in my bill in my house so we just want to pick anything other than 172.31 and if yours was 192.168.1.5 on yours you would avoid 192.168.192 
So the easiest way, I just saw a clock there that was on 10.1.7. So on this one, I'm going to 10 point. I don't have that many devices connecting to this. We're only going to have two. So I'm going to pick one with just one star. Up to 250 devices. Um, let's find one that's 192, 168, 193. I'm definitely not using that. That's it. You don't have to save. You don't have to apply. The minute you click anything in this, it's all there. There's rules. There's fancy things you can do. And of all of that, we don't care. So, we just need to use this number. You have to click on it because you can't drag to copy and paste. So, copy that number. And you can go down, if you go to download and then install zero tier, it just starts down here. It's connected to no networks. You can join a network. Just leave these tick boxes as they are. Paste your in, your address in. Click join. Now that shows me I've joined because it's saying, hey, do you want um, your machine to be searchable and and discoverable on the network we're going to ask yes to this because we actually want fairly passive communications between our cloud machine and ours we just don't want the firewalls getting interfered we want everything that does auto scanning through bonjour like apple or just any services that just can auto find each other on your local network steam for instance with this set to yes and you're on the same network Steam will actually think, Steam even though it allows remote um, stream from home, it knows you're on an external network and it limits what you can do. Uh, I believe 4K streaming for instance only works if it detects you in the same house or the same building, same network. Uh, but in this case, because we've allowed that to be discoverable, as far as Steam's concerned, it's going to think we're in the same, the same room for as far as it's concerned. Uh, now that doesn't mean you always get successful results, but uh, it removes all the barriers. That's all that matters. Now, if I click networks again and go back in, just to get it to refresh, you will see I requested one device has joined this network. And that's basically my machine. You can give it a name and say, hey, it's stealing the, the geek home. Okay. Do you want to authorize it? Yes. Once you authorize it, that's when you are going to get um, an internal IP. Remember we said 192.168.193. So hey, it's 133. It's online. Now, I can't remember if I have. Yeah, I have a bit of an issue with the zero tier on my machine. So then the ID is not showing up. And it, it normally would show here that you're on the network. Um, but I am. I am. So, we have connected uh, our main PC or your own laptop. We jump on Steam Streaming. Sorry, Steam Streaming. Uh, Parsec. We connect to Parsec. And effectively, we don't need to register. We don't need to log in. We just need to download it again. I don't have, I've not done it on this machine, so I'm just going to download it again. I don't know if it just didn't pop up there. Oh, so download the nice click it. Uh, MSI installer. Very small. Um, download. Hit run. Install. Doesn't even need to reboot. Install starts. No need to pause or fast forward this. Launch, zero tier, finish. There we go, we've got it here. So we can join the network. We can paste, no we can't paste because if you get like this, in my case, my parsec's not doing it. Uh, just log back in and grab the ID. I I'm going to just grab that ID again though because 
I don't want to log in. So that was the ID we had for network. Remember, we didn't take anything there. And network. Yes, we'll be scanned. Now we're best buddies, both our cloud machine and us. Uh, this was a laptop. We are on the, the network. Now, what does that mean? Oh, actually, haha. <laughs> that means nothing because we have to go back to the website. And there's this new device that we had. My cloud. Nope, my LUT PC. My cloud PC. Authorize. Boom. It's got an IP address. So, 192.168.193.222. So, what does that mean? Well, if I go to another, say I go to Starbucks, sitting in Starbucks, I'm going to say, I'm going to, well, I'm going to try and use this thing i want it's going to set up i might not have enough bandwidth to play a game but you know what maybe i want to go and download source set at the new game that's came out to download or i might work and i just want to set it to download but oh no the um parsec's not working for some reason something's happened something's crashed and i just can't do it well now we said start mstsc in the last video remote desktop this time we can go 192.168.193.222 as soon as you start this computer that has zero tier connected uh that's apparently stephen the geek home not stephen the geek home um we will be online the fact that it says online there just confirms it uh we can connect and there we go we have um the fact it's come up a password means it's going to allow us to remote desktop. Now that all that means is when you disconnect from remote desktop, by the way, I'm using a VM here that needs a very long password that I absolutely do not have here. And I don't have the ability to decrypt it either. Um, so I can't actually put the password in here. But when you put it in, you'd end up with just a normal remote desktop like we did in episode one and you can fix you can do whatever you need to do um if it's something as simple as restart the machine you can do it um if you need to restart parsec because maybe it just crashed or something you can start parsec in most cases though you might just want to either maybe it's uh re-download it reinstall it or something like that um all that matters is when you're done just go start restart restart your computer because um when you disconnect from remote desktop the machine will lock even if you've ticked uh not to use even if you tick that box that we did net pl was when you just log straight in on startup the minute you disconnect from remote desktop it will lock the machine and parsec won't work so whenever you've done what you've what you needed to do just start restart the computer it'll reboot it'll go back into parsec mode and you're good to go but really all this is is it just gives you the ability you could if you want now uh go to azure aws whatever you need to go to uh that was running your cloud machine and you could actually completely lock down that firewall so where we open 3389 for the firewall you could just click that off just delete it and don't allow any rules from anywhere because now that you're on this network nobody else needs to be able to get on there's no ip spoofing there's no um basically no way into the, into your machine so even when you're at home you can still connect with this ip address the good thing about that is if you didn't tick to have a static ip which means every time your cloud machine reboots it didn't get the same ip address it got a new one uh, well now it doesn't matter now you don't need to pay for it you don't need to pay that pound a month or whatever it was a dollar a month for this, the IP, we no longer care what it is. If it changed, like my home IP address changes all the time. And just like this, it can change all the time. It doesn't matter. These will always be the same. As soon as it reboots, these will be back online. Um, you can just use, you just carry this IP address with you. Um, doesn't matter if it's been 10 reboots. Next time you go to MSTSC, uh, it'll be in your history of IP addresses, 192.168.1. 
always get in there and that's pretty much all there is to it if you destroy your cloud pc and recreate it of course um if you you can just go ahead and trash your cloud pc and um, when you when you install it on a new cloud pc you just put it on uh you can be anywhere if you have if you have two laptops and a computer you can install it everywhere and all three of your machines will be able to communicate and just you'll just be like one little family with your cloud pc uh, being part of it so i hope that you find that uh, useful i i certainly do i i when you consider setting up vpns and open up ports and messing with your router this way you don't need to really do anything is pretty much a godsend i've found that it just works in a hundred percent of cases so yeah if you have any problems as with anything Hit me up on YouTube, Twitch, Discord. All the links are in the description. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Till the next one. Bye.